What will you do if you're the king of an empire and you rely on the slavery of your people to keep you rich and powerful? But you see your people waking up and starting to show dissent. What would you do if you wanted to stay in power? You would sure hope that they forget about it. You would want to distract them or even better, turn them against each other so that they forget about their original cause. The mainstream media, which we all know is in the business of maintaining the status quo, is doing a great job at doing just that. They are reducing this global transformation that's going on, this beautiful shift in human consciousness into a petty war between each other. They will continue to create sides for us to choose from. They will keep our minds focused on skin color and uniforms. They will tell us what opinion to have about events and other people. But what they will never do is bring focus back to the message of truth and change that is trying to be born and heard through this social upheaval. Are we listening to it? Are we paying attention? Or are we falling into the trap of being divided and conquered once again? Who are underneath these uniforms? Who are those we call protesters? From up close, one may be wearing a shiny badge that supposedly grants them authority over others, while the other may be holding a sign of rebellion against this said authority. But from a higher perspective, it's all the same. We are all human beings. And the reason why change is needed is meant to uplift not only those walking the streets, but also those wearing the uniforms. So let's talk to each other, not yell at each other. Let's talk to each other, not kill one another. Let's give power to our message, not our egos. Let's remind each other of the beautiful and unifying cause behind all of this. We want a world that honors all life. We want a world that is fair for everyone. We want peace. We all want to stop surviving and start living. We want to be free. It's time for a new philosophy, folks. One based on, yes, the principles of Jesus, which were love your brother as yourself, because you know what? He is yourself. We are literally all one. When we finally stop fighting against each other, we will gain enough perspective to see the real issue here. Now, one might say that the issue is the king of the empire, the corporate elite that is enslaving humanity, but even that is thinking too small. What is the life force of this system? Is it the small group of people calling the shots at the top of the pyramid? Or is it the seven billion strong army of people complying? That is us. That is humanity. We do it because we want to keep our jobs, because we want to survive. But we only have to struggle to survive if we comply with a system that keeps us in isolation and competition. If we instead unite as a people, stop complying with the current structures in place and support one another, we can not only survive, we can thrive. If we focus on solutions and learn about ways to be self-sufficient, we will no longer need to depend on the so-called owners of this world. If we use our creativity to build a new model that can work for everyone, including the environment, the old system will no longer hold power over us because we're the boss. We are the ones who either give it power or let it collapse. We blame society but we are society. Let's ask ourselves, what world do we want to live in? It's our choice, but it's a choice we gotta make together.
I don't know. I'm wondering how many, uh, how much bull can the world put up with before nature just breaks? That, that, the, how much illusion can the world suffer before nature just snaps in half? Well, I spent a lot of time with indigenous people in places.